Bruno Cornacchiola was born into an abusive household in Italy. He ran away from home many times, living on the streets. One of those times, a woman offered him pizza if he went through catechism class, and Bruno was confirmed in the church. When he got older, he joined the military and met a Protestant who blamed the war, World War I, and all the world's problems on the Pope. Bruno decided if he ever got a chance, he would kill the Pope. Bruno became a Baptist, then later a Seventh-day Adventist preacher. He married a devout Catholic woman, but he wanted her to leave the Catholic Church and become an Adventist with him. She told him to do the first nine Fridays of confession and communion in reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and if after that he felt the same, she would do as he wanted. Bruno agreed, and he did the first nine Fridays, but he did not change his mind, and his wife left the church. One day, as he was on his way to deliver a blasphemous sermon against Our Lady's Immaculate Conception, he stopped at Tre Fontani, the place where the Apostle Paul was beheaded, but in recent years had become a place where sins such as fornication and abortion were being committed. While he was working on his sermon, his children started saying, Beautiful Lady, Beautiful Lady. He went to investigate, and Our Lady appeared to him, saying these things to him. Keep in mind, this is 1947. Quoting Our Lady, I am who is with the Divine Trinity. I am the Virgin of Revelation. Write these things down immediately and always meditate on them. You persecute me. Enough now. Re-enter into the Holy Sheepfold, the eternal miracle of God, where Christ laid the foundation stone, that foundation on the eternal rock of Peter. Do not forget that I always loved you. I never forgot you. And in your misfortunes, I was always close to you because it is the one unchanging and eternal covenant of God. The nine first Fridays to the Sacred Heart, a divine promise that you made before entering into lies and becoming a ruthless, unfounded enemy of God, has saved you. Can a seeker of lies, a deceiver of the innocent, break down what God has made? Repent, do penance for the salvation of others. I will always be close to you. Your faithful spouse and hundreds of other people in the same condition as you will enter the sheepfold. I will use you as the means of their conversion. Be strong and strengthen the weak. Confirm the strong and reassure the unbelievers with your prayers. I will convert the most obstinate sinners with the miracles that I will work with this soil of sin. Your friends will become your enemies and will set themselves against you to bring you down. Be strong because you will be consoled in the very moment you believe that you have been abandoned. The conversion of obstinate sinners is important and is of value to God. I tell you that, in a spiritual and mystical sense, my heart weeps, always due to unbelief and the sins against God. Everything everyone has ever done, even the blink of an eye, is recorded in heaven on your own book of life. Come to the heart of Jesus, come to the heart of a mother, and you will be consoled and unburdened in your sorrows. All sinners come, consecrate yourselves to a mother's immaculate heart without doubting that you will find help. Who can lament about my turning anyone consecrated to my heart away? Who has sought help and was left unaided? I am beside divine justice, the reparative barrier against divine anger. To strengthen your heart with certainty, I will give a sign which will also help other unbelievers. To every priest that you meet, who are so dear to me, whether on the street or the first one in a church, say, Father, I must speak to you. If he responds with the words, Ave Maria, my son, what do you want? And indicates to another priest, saying, This is the one for your case. Do not be silent about all you have seen and wrote. This priest is already prepared for that which he must do. He will enable you to re-enter into this holy sheepfold of the living God, the heavenly court on earth, After this, you will no longer believe, as many will believe, that it was a satanic vision, especially those who will quickly abandon the ranks, pray for their conversion. Even now, for a time, God will continue to send His grace. He has done much for everyone to bring lost humanity to redemption. They must go through every kind of sorrow, crosses, slavery, and humiliation. Where is charity? What are the fruits of love? People of every age are hard as callous, especially the shepherds of the flock who do not fulfill their duty. Too much of the world has entered their souls, and this is a cause of scandal, which leads the flock away from the way, the truth, and the life. Return to the source of evangelical unity, which is charity far from the thinking of this world. You are in the world, but not of the world. How many miracles, how many apparitions, there's nothing that brings you back. You are always far from the essence of life that is in the truth of the Father's love. Hard times are being prepared for you. Before Russia converts and abandons atheism, A terribly grave persecution will be unleashed. Pray it can be stopped. The time is now approaching for the end of all things in the world. The word of him who made all things true, prepare your hearts to approach the Eucharist, the living sacrament amongst you, with great fervor. 
One day it will be desecrated, and there will be disbelief about the real presence of my Son. Draw close to the heart of my Son, Jesus. Consecrate yourselves to the heart of a mother that mystically bleeds continually for you. Glorify God who is amongst you, and flee from the things of this world. Vain shows, obscene books, all types of charms, falsehoods, and other evils like vanity and spiritism. These are things that the evil devil uses to persecute God's creatures, evil powers that work in your hearts. Through a divine promise, Satan is freed for a period of time, and he will light the fires of protest amongst men for the sanctification of the saints. My children, be strong. Resist the infernal assaults. Do not be afraid. With a mother's heart, I will be with you to give your hearts courage and soothe your pains and terrible wounds that will come at the time established by the divine plan. The entire church will suffer a terrible trial to cleanse it of the carnality that has infiltrated its ministers, particularly amongst the orders of poverty. There will be moral and spiritual trials. For a period of time indicated in the heavenly books, priests and the faithful will face a difficult trial in the world of the lost. They will have attacks hurled against them by whatever means possible, false ideologies and false theology. The call from both sides, the faithful in the fields, will be done by trial. I will be among you. The elect, with Christ the captain, will fight for you. Here are the weapons of the enemy for you to reflect upon. Blasphemy, sins of the flesh, obscenity, hunger, diseases, death, bewilderment of science, and any other means on their part. There are also other things that you will see that will affect the pure sense of the faith. Here are the weapons that will make you strong and victorious. Faith, fortitude, love, seriousness, constancy in good things, the gospel, gentleness, truth, purity, honesty, patience, enduring everything and being far from the world and its poisonous acolytes. Alcohol, smoking, and vanity. Ask to be holy, to sanctify yourselves. Do the right thing and be far from the world whilst living in the world. Humanity is lost because it no longer has those who sincerely guide it in justice. Listen, you have a guide who you should always obey. You have the Father and the Pope, Christ in the Holy, Pure, United, Faithful, and Living Priest, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit in the saints and the pure sacraments of the Church of the saints. These are terrible times for everyone. The faith and clarity will remain intact if you adhere to what I tell you. These are times of trial for all. Remain solid in the eternal rock of the living God. I will show you the way from which the saints emerge victorious for the kingdom of God, which will be established on earth on the day of victory. Love, love, and love. If you ask, soon the Holy Spirit will descend upon you to strengthen you, to prepare and fortify you on the day of God's great battle. Keep the weapons of victory, the faith. The last in living reign will sanctify everyone. Love one another. Love one another so much as to cancel your ego that is filled with arrogance and pride. Have humility in your hearts. Love one another and greet each other with a greeting of love and unity. God bless us. At this moment, Bruno asked if he could add the response, and the Virgin protect us, which Our Lady agreed, abolish hate. Be like those flowers that Isola cut down, which is Bruno's daughter. They did not lament, they remain in silence, and do not rebel. There will be days of sorrow and mourning. At the appointed time, from the east, a strong people far from God will launch a terrible attack and break the things that are most holy and sacred. Together with fear, you must have love and faith, love and faith in order to make the saints shine like stars in the heaven. Pray a lot, and the persecution will be lightened. I repeat, be strong on the rock, do penance with pure love, be obedient to the true guardian of the heavenly court on earth, the Pope, to transform the sinful flesh from sin to sanctity. Call me mother, as you always do. I am the mother in the mystery that will be revealed before the end. What was and will be the purpose of Christ's death, to appease the ire of the paternal justice? His creatures were sprinkled with Christ's pure and precious blood to fill them with love so that they will love one another. It is love that overcomes all things, divine love, virtuous love. Do not forget the rosary. It is a great help for your sanctification. The Hail Marys that you will say with faith and love are like many golden arrows that will reach the heart of Jesus. Christ is the salvation of the flesh, that primitive original sin. The world will enter into another war that is crueler than the preceding ones. The eternal rock that was the refuge of God's holy elect living in his love through the centuries will be struck primarily. Satan's rage could no longer be restrained. The Spirit of God will withdraw from the earth. The church will be left a widower. Here is the funeral cassock. The church will be left at the mercy of the world. Children become saints, and sanctify yourselves even more. Always love each other very much. 
the obscurity of the conscience and the augmentation of evil will testify to you that the time of the final catastrophe has arrived. Rage will be unleashed throughout all of the earth. Permitted satanic liberty will bring carnage to every place. A time of loss and confusion will come upon you. Unite in the love of God, where the only rule is the living gospel. Be strong in the truth of the Spirit. The sheepfold of Christ is and will be the salvation of all those who want to be saved. You will see men guided by Satan form a unitary alliance to combat any form of religion. The Church of Christ will be struck primarily to cleanse it of the filth that is inside. Usurous trade and politics against Rome. In the end, many will be converted due to many prayers. The return to brotherly love and powerful divine manifestations. For a time, permission will be given to destroy everything and everyone. Then the Lamb will show his eternal victory with the divine power. He will destroy evil with good, the flesh with the spirit, and hate with love. The reigning holiness of the Father on the throne of divine love will suffer death. For a short time, something brief will happen during his reign. A few others will reign on the throne. The last one will be a saint. He will love his enemies and show it by forming a unity of love. He will see the victory of the Lamb. The priests, although they are in the infernal confusion, are very dear to me. They will be trampled on and slain. Here is the broken cross near the cassock that represents the external defrocking of the priest. This is the time in which charity will grow cold. In this time the priests will demonstrate that they are truly my sons, living in purity, far from the world. They will not smoke, and they will be more upright following the way of Calvary. The laity, united in one creed, must work hard to give good examples of rectitude in the world amongst the sons of Satan, to prepare their hearts for salvation. Do not ever tire of being close to Jesus' Eucharistic heart, everyone parade under Christ's banner. Working in that way, you will see the fruits of the victory in the awakening of their consciences to do the right thing. You will see that, despite the evil, sinners will be converted through your efficacious cooperation, and the sheepfold will be filled with saved souls. You must conform your conduct to the will of the one who lives in the hearts dedicated to the Spirit and conformed in holiness. Strengthen yourselves and prepare for the battle of the faith. Do not be lazy in doing the things of God. You will see times when men will rather do the will of the flesh than that of God. They are continuously hauled in the mire and the chasm of voluntary perdition. Soon God's justice will be felt on the earth. Do penance. Only the saints among you in the hermitages, the convents, and in every other place hold back the destructive ire of divine justice. This is a terrible time. For that day is coming when the virgins and whoever serves God in the spirit and not according to the flesh will take upon themselves part of the scourge that will soon descend upon the earth. There is still time for sinners to repent and to place their whole lives under my mantle so that they are saved. Go to the loving heart of Jesus, my legitimate Son. Be overflowing with love. Wash yourselves in His blood of divine justification and redemption. I also died in the world, not the death as one dies in the world of original sin. My body could not die and did not die, so it could not decay and did not decay, because I am immaculate. It is in the ecstasy of divine love that I was taken to heaven by Jesus, the Word, my Son, and the angels. Thus I was taken to the throne of divine mercy of the world, cooperating with the righteous redemption. By Jesus, my Son, after three days of my ecstatic dream of love, I was taken to the throne of divine mercy by my Son and the angels for the mediation of divine graces amongst obstinate sinners. My body did not know corruption. My flesh could not decay and did not decay so that I could be the queen of the children of the resurrection. Let everyone listen now and for always. I am in the throne of the divine trinity just as the heat is in the incarnate body to live. Another possibility of salvation for all the world has been granted. It is a heavenly plan. Souls born only of flesh, dead without the bathing of a spiritual bath, baptism, will enjoy and see the presence of Jesus and I, so they can enter into glory. The Father gave us a means with two purposes. Dedicate to a soul in limbo, known or according to my intentions, the conversion of a heretic, an atheist, or an obstinate sinner. You must pray much for this sinner going as far as to constrain him to convert by love and the admission of his repentance. As soon as he converts, the soul of the one to whom you dedicated this conversion will be immediately taken to the divine throne by me and by my son. Pray and convert many with your examples of charity. It is a new proof of love, a true crusade of earthly unity. Onwards, children, into battle. It is a battle of love. I am always with you to help you. The truth is one. God the Father, His sanctity, and His justice. The life is one, the Holy Spirit, in His sacraments, and His ministers. 
I am the magnet of the divine trinity, love of the father because I am the daughter, love of the son because I am the mother, and love of the Holy Spirit because I am the spouse. As I am in the three persons in one God, love, love, love. Bruno received many more messages and visions of the future, which we may explore in future videos, but I wanted to at least give you the initial message. A few thoughts about what she said. She said, I will convert the most obstinate sinners with the miracles that I will work with this soil of sin. Like I said, Tre Fontani is where the Apostle Paul was beheaded. When he was beheaded, his head bounced three times and three springs came up, and that's what Tre Fontani means, the three fountains. However, in around this time, it became a place where people were doing the occult, practicing abortion, fornication, all kinds of sin. The soil is miraculous, just like the water of Lourdes is miraculous. So that's what she means there. She laments so many apparitions and nobody's listening to her. Yeah, we heard this at uh, Fatima as well. In the 20th century, there's at least three, and this being one of them, major apparitions where she gives these warnings and nobody's listening. She says, before Russia converts, there'll be a great persecution. This is clearly a reference to Fatima. And Russia has not been converted. They are much better than they were before. But sometime before they come back into the Catholic Church is when this persecution is going to happen. She talks about disbelief in the real presence of the Eucharist. This is 1947. Back then, people not believing in the real presence would be unheard of. Today, in fact, there was a poll that came out that says 80% of Roman Catholics do not believe in the real presence. Through a divine promise, Satan is freed for a period of time and he will light the fires of protest amongst men for the sanctification of the saints. I wonder if this could be a reference to the conversation heard by Pope Leo VIII in 1884 between Christ and Satan, where Satan gives, where, I'm sorry, where Christ gives Satan a hundred years. The entire church will suffer a terrible trial to cleanse it of the calamities that is infiltrated its ministers, particularly amongst the orders of poverty. Again, 1947, this would be unheard of today. We know what's going on with the clergy. They don't believe they have been infiltrated by Freemasons and communists, and they are living a very carnal life. They will have attacks hurled against them by whatever means is possible, false ideologies and false theology. Again, 1947, the theology was sound. Today, it's not sound at all. Bewilderment of science and any other means on their part. So clearly she sees in the later part of the 20th century and then in today that people will use science as a, an excuse not to believe in God. At the appointed time, from the east, a strong people far from God will launch a terrible attack and break the things that are most holy and sacred. I'm sorry, this is the Mohammedans. Again, 1947, what do you mean? Today, Europe is flooded with people from the east. Do not forget the rosary. It is a great help for your sanctification. The Hail Marys that you say with faith and love are like many golden arrows that reach the heart of Jesus. Every apparition, she says, pray the rosary. The world will enter into another war that is crueler than the preceding ones. Clearly, she's talking about World War I and World War II. This is obviously on the horizon. We have not seen this yet, and it's going to be bad. The church will be left a widower. Here is the funeral cassock. Now, when this apparition began, she showed him a cassock and a broken crucifix on the ground. Later, she says that this, this is the sign when they strip themselves, the, the priests and the religious, of the external signs of sanctity, that's when you know this has begun. So what she is showing is that once priests stop wearing the cassock and start wearing this business suit thing that they're wearing, we know that this, this time has begun. This, the Church of Christ will be struck primarily to cleanse it of the filth that is inside. So again, here's another reference to the bad clergy that's in the church today. The reigning holiness of the Father on the throne of divine love will suffer death. For a short time, something brief will happen during his reign. A few others will reign on the throne. The last one will be a saint. So Pius XII was the reigning pope. 
he did have some like like a miracle of the sun that happened to him at one point that was trying to get him to do the consecration to Russia. But I think what's really interesting is they says only a few others will reign. Well, there's Pius the 12th, there's John the 23rd, Paul the 6th, John Paul the 2nd, Benedict and Francis. So we're at the fifth one now. Oh, and uh, I forgot John Paul the 1st. So uh, from Pius the 12th, you have John the 23rd, Paul the 6th, John Paul one, John Paul two, Benedict and Francis. So we're on the sixth Pope. So, you know, seven is a perfect number. So maybe there's one more Pope and that's the Saint Pope. I mean, I sound like a Protestant now, but you know, at Fatima in 1929 is when our lady asked for the consecration of Russia. And then Jesus said, let not my ministers delay lest they fall the, uh, follow the example of the King of France. And that's 100 years because he asked through Mary Margaret Alacoque for the consecration of France to his sacred heart. And 100 years to the day was the establishment of the National Assembly and the, and the king lost his power. And for, during that 100 years, they did not do it. So she says my immaculate heart will triumph and he will consecrate it. So hopefully maybe this next pope is going to be a good one. He's going to consecrate Russia properly and we can get everything rolling. I don't know. We'll see. The laity united in one creed must work hard to give good example of rec good examples of rectitude in the world amongst the sons of Satan to prepare their hearts for salvation. Do not ever tire of being close to Jesus' Eucharistic heart. Everyone prayed under Christ's banner. Working in that way, you will see the fruits of the victory in the awakening of consciousness to, the right, to do the right thing. You will see that despite the evil, sinners will convert through your efficacious cooperation and the sheepfold will be filled with saved souls. So this is pretty clear that this is really up to us. We're supposed to be praying. We're supposed to be doing penance. We're supposed to be making sacrifices for these people who are Satanists. And obviously, you know, people who are on the road to hell, but maybe they're not actually Satanists. But she's saying even the Satanists are going to be converted due to the efforts of the laity with their prayers, their penances, their sacrifices. And then this, this thing she says about a new salvation where you can dedicate a sinner to a soul in limbo, pray for that sinner to be converted. And once they convert, the soul in limbo will be let out and allowed to go to heaven. I, that's, I'm going to, I haven't read all of this yet. Cause there's still a lot more there. He had a lot of visions and a lot more visitations from the blessed mother. So I want to read into that and from my understanding, she goes into more detail about a lot of these things. I'm hoping that she does with that one, but I do plan on making future videos on that content. It may not be right away because I've got to read the, the book and everything. So, well, there you have it until my next video. God bless.